Hello and welcome to the skating lesson. I'm Dave Lees. Oh, we should say bonjour. Uh, I'm Jonathan Byer. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Welcome to this and that. This is the skating lesson. We are going to be discussing everything that happened in the figure skating world this week. So if you are new, please subscribe below. Alyssa Sisney couldn't make it this week. Jonathan, she wanted to know if she needed to call in with wisdom tooth surgery. I think that she was a big fan of that discussion. Yes. <laughs> she gets it she gets it she's quietly shady right yeah, but she's been a lovely addition like yes. she she's got such a nice way about her like i always liked her as a skater i just didn't know much about her as a person so it's delightful when she pops in she wanted to pop in to discuss skating with you yes so she's i think she's at an adult camp this weekend so mm -hmm. Yeah. I was like, oh, are they better than us? Like, what's happening? Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. We're campy. We're adults. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course. Okay. Well, there was so much skating going on this week. There was sectionals. There was Japanese sectionals. There's uh, the Grand Prix of France. Um, did you watch US sectionals? It's still going on for the seniors. So Courtney Hicks is in third place. Sarah Everhart is in first. Jill I saw that Ting, Ting and uh, Courtney were competing. I have not watched them as of this taping. Uh, yeah. but I did watch Sasha. Yeah, yes. and Kirk. And then Kirk. Uh, and it it was fun to see. What did you think? Let's... So, obvious, I always feel the need as the opera person to comment on the opera. And Kirk did La Donna Immobile, which is women are fickle sung by this womanizing horrible man in rigoletto kirk knows that that music means anything that music was clearly picked for him <laughs> let's let's jonathan and come on i knew i really knew that when it became the techno version yes of course halfway through but you know again what he may lack in refinement he has in showmanship yes. so i'm like whether you don't even pursue skating i feel like you're going to be a personality of some sort this is a performative person Yes, but it's just hard because he's so good in so many ways, but the basic fundamentals in terms of the skating skills and then just the jump technique is just, mm. I mean, they'll do anything. And the reason the jump technique is so whack is because the skating skills are so lacking, mm. right? So you have to jerk the body to get in the air. But he's so talented and he's now, so this is, this is a weird me jumping forward, but we're just like diverging for a moment. There was an interview I was reading about Alexandra Trusova talking about the difference in, in the training styles of Tuberitsa and Plushenko. Mm -hmm. And when she said when she went to Plushenko, he was floored she could do any jumps mm -hmm. because she was unable to do like his basic skating skill warm-up exercises designed to make the jumps possible. Mm -hmm. So um it's sort of exactly what you're talking about. It's kind of remarkable that these jumps can be done without that sort of fundamental yeah. thing happening. Um, and listen, he trained with Robert and we always talked about Robert's skating skills too. So I think there's a common denominator here about what the focus is. I mean, I think you can see it when he went for that triple axel that looks like he's never come close to landing it cleanly. Why would you do that in the competition? I get wanting to put a jump out there, but when it's a double under, I think that only ruins your reputation. So I don't. And now we can go full circle back to your Mary Scott hold when um, interview when she was talking about um, Gord was it Gordon? Gordy, oh, Gordy McKellen, Gordon. the one who did the yeah. axel. Yeah, about like we put it in and definitely should not have because like yeah. just the the percentage wasn't there yet. And well, is everybody's been saying Kirk needs to get um, skating skills, skating skills, skating skills. And they've just been hammering that triple axel from all reports. However, he doesn't just need the skating skills. He needs like clean, basic triples. And I used to watch him do the triple, triple with the loop afterwards. And you'd see it. I mean, he works so hard, but like just drilling the muscle memory of the cheat and then going for this and like in it. And he works very hard, but that's just... Uh, yeah, the more it's reinforced, the harder it's going to be to change. Yeah, and like, you know, Robert's a freshman in college and out of the sport. <laughs> you know, like that's, you kind of look at it and you're like, this kid is so talented and needs, first of all, he needs someone to really work with him on the skating basics, like every day. And I mean, Alyssa sent a text that said, 
if he worked on his skating skills, he could save the sport with that personality. If they yeah. had someone that worked with him an hour a day on skating skills, not a choreographer person, like skating skill technician, because Jen Kay from Hackensack is going to come and be like, he works with Nina. Well, Nina does the spins. She does everything else. He needs like ice dance expert being like, you have to learn how to stroke. Yeah. Because he doesn't, he kind of pushes left and right. Like if you ever see, um, like the beginning of Bambi or like a dog walking on ice, you know, like with the pine legs. Yeah. And when he kicks back like that, he's not stroking and doing like the proper push in there. And then that is the basic technique that fails him on the jobs. Yeah. And yes, he does get overly excited and he, you know, is a showman and everybody get you watch him skate out to the free skate. And it's so endearing is that he does his whole, and then the people are cheering for him. And then you see him look back, like he really gets into like, it. Yeah, I did it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. 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 And then you're like, oh no, he is not okay. like focused. Yeah. Okay. Which is also true. Yeah. There are a lot of people that work. Listen, I just he just needs to get the skating. It's it because it and, and the other thing is people will be like, well, he's young. Well, if you don't fix it when they're young, they get to senior and it's too late. And in this case, I worry it's too late already. It's yeah. I mean, my, my comparison to this is when I was studying piano as a kid and I had, I was basically similar to him. I could have a lot of flair, but I didn't really have the proper fundamentals. So then when someone is talking to you about basically pulling back, slowing down, sort of mm -hmm. taking away all the stuff you can do so you could learn it in a more proper way as the young, ambitious person, that's the last thing you want to do. Yeah. You He's just so kind of want to keep pushing and doing band-aid fixes but ultimately in the big picture, like you're saying with Alyssa, like the potential may be even so much more greater than he, even he or his team realizes, but it's hard to go slow. It's hard to sort of put the brakes on things and just sort of address them. And he's so eager and so talented. And, you know, those types can like, they're, they're brilliant in some ways, so they can figure out physically how to get things done. But now, there, I mean, you can see it in the step sequence on the shore. It's yeah. it, it's like, oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh, that poor child. <laughs> you know, like, but um, really, Lucius, who won, who doesn't get as much fanfare as the other two, is a great jumper. He used to get dashes on his spins. So the work Nina has done with him to get him to get his spins up to the level is huge. Because he used to be at these competitions and do like these great triple lutzes or triple lutz triple toes and then just like the dash for the camel spin mm -hmm. so i mean huge that he won here for sasha fegan it looks like he's grown but overall it's improved uh, his flip and his lutz are his tougher jumps but they're putting them in there and getting that i mean the boys are all growing the boys are growing they're growing jonathan they are and again um, that's gonna throw throw everything i can't imagine yeah you have to recalibrate so. while that's happening yeah so but um yeah, an interesting turn of events at sectionals in Japanese sectionals. Marin Honda made it. Thank God. She's our Christmas gift for Japanese nationals. We get to see the Little Mermaid. I'm excited. I, my <laughs> Christmas just got brighter. I don't know about yours, but I'm just thinking about putting the tree up and watching Marin Honda and just. Yes. Yes. Her. And the skating skills, gorgeous. You know, obviously some watered down like triple toe, double toe moments, but it just doesn't matter. It's just the, the pure glide. I just so love skating. Crazy. I love watching her. You yeah. Know? Yeah. And as Peggy would say, gorgeous face. <laughs> I to watch. Yeah. yeah. So oh, good. Oh, good. All right. You read the Atari interview. I haven't done it yet. I've had the busiest week and like it's been so stressful with work and the stuff getting done. I don't know. I just have been in this mental place where that is the last thing <laughs> I have wanted to and read. It, and it will anger you. Like it's it's that kind well, that's of why thing. I, didn't read it. I saw the headlines. I saw that she was saying, like, you know what it is? It's like each time they tell us a story about Balyeva, or each time they tell us a story about Yulia or Evgenia or this one, like it's always like a different version of like BS that somehow makes it Terry a victim. And what I saw, they were like, they were having ice cream and this, and like, like ice cream caused trimetazidine to get in your system. Like none of it made any sense or yeah. like why Valjeva would be eating ice cream when a Terry's monitoring her weight like crazy uh, before the From individual- a volunteer or something. Yeah, each- It made no, like, no sense. And I'm sure the funny thing is like, 
there's got to be closed caption footage of what happened back there. <coughs> the IOC must have that somewhere for, in like, let's say that someone actually did hamper with a doping test, right? Like, could they subpoena all that footage? Like, obviously, and it's, it was China. Like, hello, there's like recording of everything. Right. Come on. Like, well, and one of her arguments was like, well, she was clean at the Olympics. And I was like, oh. I love the gaslighting. The, maybe not, you maybe take not what a mental journey where you yeah. start to like doubt your own sanity. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I will do it because the Valieva case is coming up and I will get myself in that frame of mind. I The level, she's the victim in every scenario, right? Do you notice that? Yes, and you, with, you, with every skater themselves and yeah. every other coach and every official and every parent, yeah. And yeah. you can't be the victim and the victor in every situation. Yeah, agreed. I mean, it's one of those things and I don't know if this is cultural or if this is generational. I think like, with, for instance, when Simone Biles withdrew, I noticed a very diff from the Olympics, uh, uh, I noticed a very different response depending on the generations. I found people, our generation, I mean, I'm a little older than you, but, um, and people younger were sort of like, good for her. Good for her for making that decision. I knew some older people that were like, she needs to toughen up. And rah, 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 rah. Oh, yeah. and no, I think we're moving away from this. I was coached by Russians during that whole time. I remember going to the rink the day that happened. Okay. Yeah. The summer we skated, the, I like, they want them to toughen up. They want them to suffer. They want them to push through. They want the grit, all this sort of stuff. And people didn't understand what the twisties were, first of all. P there are people that don't believe in mental health, don't believe, this, all sorts of stuff. So yeah. also when Hawaii pulled out last year, there were a lot of comments, you know, yeah. publicly people might be um supportive privately people say a whole lot of things yeah and, um, but i mean this was a lot of these stories were like zagitova had so overworn her legs that they were all bloodied and gross and she, terry was like i couldn't even look at her legs because if i did let her know that how bad they looked then she would know and she wouldn't keep pushing through it and I think the point of that story is to be like, wow, what a fighter Zagitova is. But I just, I don't think any Olympic medalist. Right. And Jonathan, if someone is working so hard that their legs are bloodied, do you realize that in all of these interviews, they're giving you hints that something is not normal, right? right. That doesn't, okay, ballerinas, yes, their feet get bloody, right? But a skater for their legs to get bloody in the way that she's, in the way that she's talking about, there are so many hints of doping, of like cultural abnormalities, even in skating, right? Because how does she skate the next day after her legs are that bad and she's that right. injured? That they're so visually upsetting to you mm -hmm. and yet she's out on the ice for 12 hours the next day or whatever. Mm -hmm. All the clips that she said from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. I mean, it's all hyperbole. It's all exaggeration. It's all... If any of it were true, there would have to be so many drugs involved. Like, right. there's so many layers of problematic behavior. Like, take your pick. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was interesting to hear from Trusova, who in a non-dramatic way was sort of describing the differences of the varying places that she had trained. She was like, it was only competition focused. It was only points focused that they would have printouts of every area they lost points in their run through the day before. Mm. Whereas Blashenko was sort of coming at things from a basis of what is figure skating, fundamental mm. tools of skating that would then result in a good competition, but theirs was solely result driven. Not you know, like, so Hackensack, one of the coaches used to copy the Atari edge class and like do it and I'd be like looking at this they were Montclair at the time and I remember being like why would you want to emulate that but that shows that like people are following the trends but you realize about like since I started doing figures like the light bulb moments that start going off and then because I've been strengthening my feet and my ankles to the point where like I feel like I could play the piano with my toes <laughs> nice okay right? yeah <laughs> um, which is a freaky thing when it starts happening right 
um, you start to realize like what's been lost in terms of like skating skills and just core strength and deportment with the skaters. And you're like, yeah. Well, this and again, is- this this was coming from Trusova, who was jumping all those quad lutzes and flips yeah. at the time. And she was like, and I was unable to do his basic warm-up exercises. Mm-hmm. I could not do them. And that's when Plashenko was utterly floored, because he was like, how can you jump at all if you don't And this how- is Nishin technique of skating skills. So you can see the deterioration, right? Like from like, Shook, Nishin. Yeah. You know, like, are you kidding? That's like, put it in context. That's crazy, Jonathan. Okay. Someone needs to work with you on basic fundamentals. Yes. Yeah. Carlo Fossi was right. Okay. He was, he was right a thousand times. Okay. He, he told Linda he could have got her that gold medal. Okay. That's her fault. Okay. (laughs) We all make choices. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that it might have cost Robin his. You never know. <laughs> At what cost? I don't what know. Cost? Yeah. Oh man. Okay. Grand Prix of France. We, we, we got to get off of the terror. I mean, the Valieva case. It's supposed to continue. It'll. And then even after it's heard this week, I don't think you know, the resolution could take. No, I'm sure it'll be like another delay or something. Then you have the Dennis Ten Memorial, which is already. A questionable competition because of how it's been used in the past. Right. <laughs> it's where Diana Davis went. No exception. For this yeah. weekend. Yeah. Last year, all of Arena's teams got the scores they needed to go to Worlds. <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. Got that big score. They yeah. all, it was, it was amazing, right? Yeah. The, the stories about what really happens in dance is so incorrect. It's so wrong, you know. I know, and we'll get into it when we're talking about some of those like, I don't think that coaches should be callers. I'm sorry. And it's just we'll not. Yeah, it's too much. another competition. competition where Sylvia, the Polish coach, is going to be a technical special. I'm like, stop it. This is like, this cannot be happening. This no. is so, it, could you imagine if Raphael were a technical specialist in like, Single skating, or Tom Z, or Tammy Gamble, or yeah. you'd be like, no way, no way should that be allowed. Correct. This should not be happening in ice dance. Please. I'm sorry Please. for the legitimacy of the sport. I am not hating on any of the players. Who I understand there are reasons you want to be a caller. It helps the technique of your team. It helps make the political deals to get your skating school up in the world. It's so gross to me patently. Like, this should not be. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. You can't judge. You can't judge and be a coach. So why should you be able to be a caller where you have maybe- in many ways you have just as much power. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to say something is a level two or a level three, that could sway things. And did here. Yeah. Did if we go to skatingscores.com, the best website on the on the uh, planet. Uh, yes. <laughs> and then all is revealed there. <laughs> all is revealed. Yeah. Now, when my when my coach Alexei, who loves court browning, court browning, he was very upset. He watched the exercise of court and he was like, he didn't extend his legs. He didn't extend his legs. And I, and I told you he's like a real perfectionist that could drive a person crazy. Okay. okay. <laughs> we fight. Okay. Okay. It's never about the substance of what he's saying about the order of learning things. Okay. Okay. He's a little, he's a little like too obsessive about boots touching. Like on cross rolls, like there are things that like if I work with Paul or I work with Yuri, like the boots aren't touching with Alexei, like the boots have to touch all the time. All the time he wants the boots touching. And I'll be like, well, that actually makes it look a little constipated. Yeah, that would seem odd to me. I you want to argue with the Ukrainian about anything? Okay, okay. <laughs> His wife runs marathons without shoes. Okay, she has the Guinness world record in Ukraine for, and he couldn't pronounce Guinness. Um, <laughs> uh, he, for um, running marathons without shoes, which I didn't know was possible. I'm like, are you running on pavement or on like, that's I like- remember, I remember that like era where everyone was wearing like the individualized toe juice. Would love that, it's yes. The post to sort of emulate that feeling. Weird. No, I've heard about it, but it sounds terrible. <laughs> Sounds awful. It sounds like bloody. That sounds like bloodied feet, right? That's very a Terry. Correct. Like, yeah. 
I mean, these are people that like ice bathing and also Not for punishment. Yeah. Not for punishment. Yes. Okay. <laughs> but he loves that Court Browning and Gary Beacom. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and we see his marks on skatingscores.com for when he used to judge and love going through that with a fine tooth hey, comb. Very informative. Yeah. Yes, and I like to bring that up to him. This <laughs> Mr. Dave, what are you doing? No, 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 no. Well, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um going into let's start with ice dance this week let's start with ice dance shall I'm we into your Tana dane team the top gun is growing on me i think there are four songs where there should be three i don't know which song i want to cut i want more of take my breath away and i don't feel like we get the full musical satisfaction of it before we switch to danger zone and it feels abrupt to me but overall i really like them i think that this is the more successful of their two programs and there's something about the 80s thing that works for them. I think it has a freshness and it has a point of view, which a lot of these programs don't have. Yes, I agree. What was interesting to me, and again, we have talked about you, especially in singles and pairs and things like that. It doesn't make sense always to be comparing scores from competition to competition. Now we are. For certain in I Stance, I think one can look at this and oh, look yes. at the score here slotted them below Fear and Gibson. Now, which is Fear where they were, right? Is it, this is going to be very close between the two teams this season because they're both fighting for fourth place. Yeah. Because they're both trying to push towards the podium either this year or next year, you can see. Yeah. And it was the the Canadanes, Fournier, Baudrillard. Okay. Yeah, the Canadanes, everyone's going to ask us, who are the Canadanes? They're Canadian. They used to be Danish because he is Danish. She's Quebecois. They've been skating together. They switched countries, which happens only in ice dance or whatever, right? And, and we, we love wordplay. We love wordplay. And also their names are Laurence, Fournier, Baudry, Nicolas Sorensen. People also call them Lolo and Nick. I was seeing on the signs. So all the different... The Top Gun team, okay? She used to get the snow from the ice in her hair at the end of her program last season. It was a great program. She's got fabulous abs. He's nice to look at. Don't look at him too closely if you want to put them on the top of the podium because she's the much stronger skater, but you know, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they were losing levels here. And I don't know as a result of Fear and Gibson doing so much sort of early competing if they had sorted out some of those level things just as they were going and and they're just a smidge behind in that um i mean where if they were to both skate cleanly and get all their levels would you prefer one over the other in fourth place you know i really want a netflix series to follow all of these teams because i'm fascinated by the competitiveness in training and the dynamics you know they only have one top team now which is I think different from the school they're used to having like two of the top teams but they have like one four and five which is interesting right because and then you get olivia smart in the mix like losing to the koreans right and i think that those dynamics would be interesting to watch because there were times last year where fournier uh, baudry and Sorensen were almost close to chalk and baits if you remember during the grand prix um so I think it's an interesting mix. Like, are they still having their wine nights or whatnot? Who knows? I think it would be natural if they toned those down for a minute be, based on how that is, just human nature. But uh, I am fascinated by the whole dynamics and what's happening because, you know, Hawaii and Baker did withdraw, you know, from the Grand Prix. And, and you have to wonder, okay, the Browns are there. They're camping, getting programs, and you have uh Carrera and Panamarenko like there's just like a lot of shifting happening beneath like the surface of it all and I think for, for I forget what your question was I'm going on this narrative if you saw Fearon Gibson if you feel that both delivered their their top ability Here's the thing about Fear and Gibson they remind me of a young Ali Raisman in I don't think that they have the fundamental technical ability of other top teams. As a team. 
As I a team. She does, yeah. But they are, I'm talking about Fear and Gibson. The, the, oh, I, I'm sorry, excuse me, I'm sorry, yeah. Right. They are driven workhorses. They are consistent. More consistent than Fournier and Baudry. Fournier and Baudry. More Baudry. often. They compete often. Yeah. They are likable as the day is long. And we see them hustle from competition to competition. That they are putting in the work, which we are going to start a book club. We are going to we're, we're announcing soon about artist books and then books about reaching your potential. And we're going to do one a month of each, right? And we'll you'll have more details. But we want to talk about there are books called Do the Work. There's you wanted to do about talent is overrated. Um, I got another book someone recommended about manifesting um, things. I think Fear and Gibson, for whatever reason, they have this like real positive dynamic between them and the coaches and seem to just be like the little engine that could like when you would watch Ellie Raisman compete you know that her feet are flexed mm. you know that the legs have separations you know that she's flat-footed but she's so consistent and confident that over time you start to believe it and I think that the British have that same quality where every time they go out they're they're going to be consistent and it's lower quality maybe in certain respects, but they're improving and moving better. With Fournier and Beaudry and Sorensen, I, there's sometimes an uneasiness with some of the mistakes. And I think the level twos are really need to be level threes, you know, toward, for their second competition. Um, in the past, they've had little errors. And I think that's what really separates fourth from fifth. To me, it's like a little intangible thing. I don't think it's about... I don't think it's about anything that's happening technically on the ice, right? Like, I don't think mm. that you can look at Fear and Gibson and be like, you know, their stroking is so much better than the candidates. They're just their basic lot. No, I don't, I don't believe that. I think that their overall cohesive competition performance is stronger from competition to competition. I think that they just compete up. Yeah. And, and they're lacking things there, but they compete up. Well, and, and there's be an energy and a dare I say sort of youthful energy to fear and Gibson of new and, and yes. coming up and there does seem just the slightest bit of a different energy from the Canadians that they are on the other side yes trying to yeah, yeah. To hold on as opposed to build up yeah and I don't know because there's more maturity from the Canadians there's they've chemistry they're a couple they've got Listen, they're both great teams to watch. I don't know that either one is going to move into the top three this year. The top three is, I don't think so. it's interesting how the top three, you know, we're missing a Tessa and Scott or uh, a Papadakis and Cizeron. And I hope that Papadakis and Cizeron will come back. If that's what they want to do. You know, they were skating in Montreal a couple of weeks ago, maybe getting ready for tours or whatever. But I think that the sport is still missing them and that they would be number one. And I think that it would cement their legendary status because in a weird way, I almost feel like because of COVID and doping. They were it, overshadowed, yeah. They were overshadowed and the last Olympics didn't have the resonance that they usually would. Right. Maybe there were things going on in my life personally, whatever, but I just look back at those Olympics and I'm like, they didn't get the kind of bump that they right. should have gotten. And right. I think some of that is COVID, the environment, there was no crowd. And I think some of that, those Olympics were marred in disaster, yeah. complete disaster. And I think that they still would be the best. Yeah. Or at least make it really interesting and challenge the other top teams. Um, I think, you know, this Chalk and Bates, Gillis and Poirier and the Italians. Yes, the Italians watching here in the free dance have the best skating skills of the three teams. And yet they pick nice music. The beginning of it just gets boring midway through it. I can't explain what it is. Their pictures were okay. The rhythm dance is terrible. I don't understand what Footloose and Against All Odds have to do with each other. Also, Phil Collins' voice repeats like three times in a very strange spot in there. You think it's like skipping. I don't know. <laughs> um, it was strange for me. I don't really... Think but again, it, they're maximizing levels 
geo we it's like all of these little things that as uh an overall performance don't necessarily add up to my enjoyment of it but it does certainly add up that tech score it's kind of you know in 96 at the olympics they talked about the romanian gymnasts a lot and they were saying there are going to be better gymnasts here in the competition at certain things but these are going to be so physically trained and consistent that they're going to medal at the end of the day mm. And to me, the Italians are like that. They yeah. are not aesthetically the best, just inherently. It's a, you watch them uh, rhythm dance, free dance, and you're like, you want to be against chalk and bass? It's like, what? Right. No. Right? But they can skate. Yeah. But the packaging is a disaster. And the rhythm dance, especially like that. Oof. Oh, yeah. man. And like, the fact that he's so clearly like one of the Supremes and she's Diana Ross and, but like, then she doesn't carry her neck or posture in the right. It's just, it's a mess. So I think it's a tough team, but they're right there knocking on the door. You know? Yeah. I mean, and, and really, I think they clobbered uh chalk and bait score. No, no, oh, no, they didn't. No, they didn't. It was no. like two points or something um, behind them. But it's close. And that's the thing is that it is close. So. Wait, no, I thought Chalk and Bates. They Chalk were... and Bates. We have to, okay, we're going to have to like do the scores from week to week. Chalk yeah. and Bates in the free dance. Oh, in the free dance, they were ahead by not a point. 128.02 as opposed to the Italians 127.92. Yeah, 128.09. You two, uh, yeah. It was that they were two point. The Italians were two points ahead of Chalk and Bates in the rhythm dance. Yes. So, yeah. It's interesting. The rhythm dance was kind of not it. Like, the rhythm dance for Chalk and Bates was not as successful as their free dance, and that's, they're going to have to move up, and I'm excited to see them at their next competition to see if it's better. You What's know. that rebound? Yeah. Uh, who do we see in China next week? I don't even remember. I'm, I'm pulling it up right now. And also just interesting to notice we've been talking about people that are interestingly... Oh, it's Piper and Paul again next week. Okay. We're going to see them. Okay. The the French team here, mm. I mean, it's, it's a totally weird, don't really understand it program for the rhythm dance. The French again, team as opposed to the French team that's now Canadian. Then they were, you know, neck and neck here. Yes. Yes. I'm talking about... Um, what is both very kooky, right? Both very yeah. kooky teams. And... But they solved that 1980s dilemma in an interesting way, because at least it was different. I didn't really understand it, and it was like odd pantomime -y, but it was holding my interest, and it was a different concept. So I, I appreciated that from them. What did you think about the Corpse Bride from the Pink Panther team last year? I mean, that's some kookiness. I mean, it was kooky. It was enjoyable. It was... Well, and as we talked about, like, those programs that sort of start to plateau, even something that's being very well skated, like the Italians, I kind of check out. Yeah. At some point. I start to wonder how much longer the program is. I'm looking at the tentacle box. So I suddenly check my email or, you know, I, I, I'm distracted. With something as oddball as, as the French rhythm dance, it held my interest the entire time, even though that may not be what I would have recommended or was craving, but it held my attention. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I thought, it, yeah, both of them interesting. I, and it was weird. There were so many like clusters of teams that you had watched like together at this competition. But I did watch the Koreans and um, Olivia Smart and Tim T, the Spanish team, <laughs> British and German. Yes. Um, do you notice that she is being very Alexa Kinurum with Chris? in that free dance where she's so focused on him mm. and doesn't trust him yet. Yeah. That she's making mistakes because you can see her on the twizzles staring at him when she should be focusing on herself. Yeah. And okay. So he does have to become more reliable or whatever in training, but she also has to work on trusting him more because yeah, she it, it because her monitoring it, it has no bearing on his his success. No. And it, you can't look at him to become better, right? And I think that their free dance is a mess overall. The Olivia Smart, and I don't know. Really do it for me, yeah. From the fact that she's not even wearing a bold color, it's like a muted color, and then he's in a muted color. 
Again, they don't have enough contrast. It just looks like a first year program for their free dance. They've got a lot of potential, but they need to work on their connection. connection. And they also need to work on, is this going to be a team that is going to go the distance? Because it sort of has this like, yeah, feeling where like maybe, but they're struggling. So they either have to come together or not, right? Yeah. And I think you can see the cracks in the partnership when they compete that they're not like a complete unit just yet. And I think like she's been in this school for a while. He's so outside. He's obviously like, I think his strength is that he's kind of all over the place, but now he has to kind of be a little bit more rigid leading manish but she also has to trust him more yeah it's on her too you know to invest in this partnership and build him up and have confidence in him because if you don't have confidence in someone they're gonna know it <laughs> they're gonna feel yeah. it like yeah. yeah and and she was making mistakes so because she was not focused on herself they yeah. should have beaten the korean team here they are better skaters at this point in time but hannah <laughs> freaking phenomenal performer with her upper body and her arms doing uh in the umbrellas of Cherbourg like she's a star she's a complete star and I think Olivia's gonna have to book it you know and really put in that work before the second half of the season so. yeah because I mean especially in the free dance some of the judges put them even lower because they were ninth in the free dance and a lot of them had them in 10th well, it didn't always look like she trusted Adria for a lot of times either, right? And I... Well, we had reason to believe that was a worthy concern <laughs> based on the former partnership, but... but... Like, I think with Adria, like, listen, the last season it came together in such a strong way and whatever they did to make that happen, she needs to do it. They need to work on this with Tim because they won't get where they need to go. That have been several years in. Yes. Well, I mean, they I mean, don't have the several years right now and who knows if this is a two-year part three-year partnership seven-year right. partnership like they need to figure that out like where yeah. are we going with this Let's look at that level. yeah yeah because i think that that comes across when they compete i think even as viewers we're like olivia you you doing this for real yeah it almost looks like a project of some sort instead of a decision well, come on they, they went to the first competition they didn't have their costumes fully set i think there's just been a lot of it's new yeah. And there are changes and you need those growing pains, but they need to just, they need to figure out like, all right, we're doing it. We're not doing it. We're doing it. You know? So oh. it's okay. Um, But yeah, overall, that was the event. what do you think of Paris here? Cause this was. um, a we're, week. we're starting with some tougher disciplines. <laughs> Get it out of the way. Um, You have the Italians who are doing the same free program as last year. Right. With no added interest. Although she had more of like a sexy nightgown type dress on this week. Um, against Leah and Trent. The Now We Are Free music from Gladiator. The girl's like 19. What is she free from? Like when we saw Nicole Bobek do this music, she had, um, you know, overcome the meth ring. She had been to prison. She was free. We were feeling it. We were loving it. And you know what? Like Stolen she... Mary Scott Bolt's car. Yeah. <laughs> Mary did say that. Yes. Oh, yeah. Mary did yeah. say that. that she did. <laughs> like, I forgot about that. You know, when I did uh, not. That was that was that's in there now. <laughs> um, I mean, Mary is so fabulous and blonde. She, really she really is. Yeah. <laughs> I guess, I guess it, especially what's interesting. Sorry, there's like big hawks outside my window. Um, that we have Leah and Trent, and we have um the Italians, and I think. What what they can do are the side by sides when they do them, and yeah. so it was failing them both here. But I was to me their their ticket is going to be in the side by side jumps. I think for the Italians the the program sort of falls flat for me. For Leah and Trent, it's really the lifts, and, and maybe other people know how to hold herself. Yet yeah, she is not beautiful in the lifts, and they're She's slow in the positions. You know, I can't stand the the split. Position. He doesn't have a neck. She really doesn't have a neck. Yeah. Um, 
sort of the pair elements are still falling a little bit short for me. There's no chemistry to the music or each other, which the, with the age difference, you know, maybe that's a good thing. It's very uh, workhorse. That That's what I'm getting. Like we're here. And to I'm worried that because they won one Grand Prix that Canadians will get too excited by this. Cause you, you know, the infighting with Montreal and, and Deanna being American, but you know, the difference between the teams is a good 20 points and maybe it should be like 25. Um, it, it good for Canada for having two good pairs. Um, but the level of quality is night and day from watching last week's pair competition, where I felt like we saw the best free skate that we've seen in pairs in a long, long time without the aid of anything a Terry might know about. I mean, right. right. You know, I think looking back, it's pretty clear that we've seen some doped up pairs for yeah. 10, 15 years, yeah. long, long, long decades, really, if we're thinking about it. There are, there are certain things we don't want to say. We just, you know. Yeah. We remember fondly like Camelot, you know. Um, and I, I didn't think that we, um, we go back in time, but yeah, I think that that was, it's going to be an interesting. Well, who is Vienna against in her next Grand Prix? Do we know? We're going to China. So she's against, you know, you know, making sure that you don't swallow any water when you're brushing your teeth. Because remember, she got sick last year at the second Grand Prix and her grandmother passed and they just never recovered for the end of the season. So we need to keep her in a plastic bubble. Do not sing in the shower. I made that mistake when I was in China. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it was weird to do like, I do the sinus rinses when I'm over there and I brush my teeth, obviously, but you're doing it with bottled water the whole time. You it's no better do with yeah. bottled water, okay? Yeah. She is against Pong and Wang. Okay. Wang and Zhu, Zhang and Yang, Hawk and Kunkel. So that's the um, Gallardian and Ambrosini, um, and then the Monkobs and Valesi and Piazza. So, yeah, I mean, she's got obviously a great shot, but it's against herself. So, Jonathan, Ellie and Danny had to withdraw after the short program here. They had a bad fall in practice. And I wanted to just get your take on this pair because when I see the costumes, St. Patrick's Day for East of Eden and what he is wearing, and then the fact that, like, it feels like they've been rushed. Like the elements have never been solidified. The throws, the side-by-side -side jumps. This team in general makes me very nervous. And I don't know what it is, if it's just me or what it is, but I have, I feel an unease when I watch them. Yeah, I mean, I know that they were doing well earlier on when they were doing all the doubles, but I mean, obviously her fall on the triple sow cow, the fall on the throw triple sow cow, like it just, I don't understand. Um, where it's going I guess. And there's, listen there's a certain unease with american pairs over the years like we have been through many iterations of like marissa and simon denny and coughlin yeah. felicia and nate to me this team is somehow less reliable than these other teams like i just feel nervous watching yeah, them. yeah. Like That's inherently wrong. I, 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 I'm very uneasy. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's an even partnership from the age point of view to everything. I don't know. It just, and I think when you watch Leah and Trent, you're like, okay, that team is coming together a little bit. Well, something about that team inherently makes sense and you know where their trajectory will be. Even if it's not my okay. team team, like, it seems clear what that path is and can be. This is yeah. much, much more confusing to me. I know they've gone to work with Bruno Marcotte. I just, I don't feel like they're gelling. And yeah. I don't, that's what it is. Yeah. I don't know what that is, but it hasn't gelled yet. They went to Worlds before they had a full table of elements, which I thought was too soon. And it just seems to continue down this path that seems like, it's like if you, built a house with a crack in the foundation and like you just are trying to keep um, going. Yeah. yeah. I mean, e and even with what you were talking about with Kirk, like the way to sort of get to the next level is to sort of take a step back and work on some yeah. fundamentals. They seem, uh, given the schedule and circumstance for U.S. pairs, they're having to be ready for things they shouldn't have to be ready for yet. 
So it's like, this should be a time about like basics and gelling and connecting and figuring stuff out, but then they're already at Worlds and then they're already at a Grand Prix. And it's like, oh, it seems like we kind of rushed some steps here. Yeah, because you should have the elements before you go to the competition. Because I don't think that you get, okay, if you're at a competition and you don't have your elements behind you or the basic training behind you, that's like, like that feeling, that's like that dream where you, are in school and you're naked and you also have a math test or whatever, you know, like you're on stage and the curtain goes up and you have no idea what the show is. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know my lines. I have no idea what this is. That's sort of a little bit what, what this reminds me of. Yeah. So now you're trying to like come back from that on top of gelling as a team and maybe you're getting that reputation or that what Michelle called it, like the record, the broken record. You want it to be a good one, right? You, well, you don't want it to be like you're missing your throws and missing your jumps just because you didn't have time to solidify them. Right. So I find it awkward and I find it to be, you know, symptomatic of bigger problems in pairs and in general in the US. But to me, this team seems rushed and I don't, I don't feel like it will end well because it's been rushed, you know? between whatever because of the situation in the u.s all good intentions whatever it just seems rushed and there's something uneasy yeah about it i don't i don't know and i saw different clips i don't know which fall was the bad fall in practice because a bunch of them on twitter didn't look great but it just looked uneasy and i know she was being checked for concussions and you know then you get into can they even compete at nationals and it's yeah it's unfortunate yeah. and upsetting so you know, not the best. Um, the other pairs were okay. The French team was okay. Didn't seem like a bronze medal worthy team at a Grand Prix, but you know what? Good for them. So it's sentimentally, what a nice moment for France. Yeah. Yes. Well, what do you think of the men's event? Because the men's event was fantastic here. This was interesting. All right. Who do you want to start with? Where do you want to start? Hopious notes on. Okay. Um, also, we should just say that the skating world lost two huge people this week, Yuta Mueller and Oleg Protopopov. Um, so, you know, yeah. our heart goes out to everyone. And that was, you know, both huge losses for skating, both over 90 years old. Incredible. Um, the loss nonetheless. Yeah. So, yeah. all right. Tell me about the men's. What do you want? Uh, okay. Why don't we start with. Ready for this? Mm hmm. Oyang Jin. Let's start there for a second. Because we're gonna we're gonna start at the bottom and we're gonna work our way up. All right. You're so, throwing me. I didn't expect to start this way. Okay. No, right? So I have to say the short program with the quad toe, and you know, I know he had an issue on the the combo and all this sort of stuff. The packaging, I mean, although it was no no no, that I'm thinking of the free skate. I liked the short program. Okay. I was I do see what they must be doing with him, which is, it was a, a pleasing program, which was, he sort of relied on gimmickry sometimes in the past as they were sort of trying to make him more palatable. Um, it was it was kind of a nice program. Now the free skate with like the Lisa Frank top and all this sort of stuff, not a good program to me. That was more sort of like old Boyan Jin, um, but it's, it's fascinating to see some of these quads kind of come back for him. Just an intellectual, I don't find him competitive anymore, but it's interesting to see yeah. how they're sort of rebuilding and re-solidifying sort of like fundamentals that are helping the overall skating. Um, as opposed to, for instance, a Steven Gogolev, which I am surprised if I'm being honest, that this season is going as well for him as it is. Not that it's a huge success of the season, but I, he was someone that after last year, last season rather, I sort of thought we had taken out of the mix. And he's he's kind of around now. What is your take on all of that? I don't want to make this personal, so I'm going to lump in a couple of people. Okay. Bo Yang. Stephen Gogolev, Camden Polkinen. Where is this going? Where is this going? What's the end game? That's why with the Boyang thing, I'm trying to view it just as like, 
all right, you've taken someone who has been competing a long time, sort of had some questionable skating skills along the way. So on an intellectual level, it's interesting to see how they sort of improve the overall skating. But competitively, I don't know where this goes. I mean, for all we know, Stephen- China will... trying to get into the team event, if they're trying to say like, we've got Nini, we've got Bo Yang, we will get a pair team and we have a dance team. So we can have like a little bit of a four, you know, four horse race. And quite frankly, could Gogolev not be Canadian champion? And maybe that is enough. The, I think Canadian men are in a rough spot. You've got Wesley, who's consistent, but not a star, right? So he, unfortunately, Wesley doesn't have the charisma to have to put him someplace up near the top. Right. Gogolev, doing better than Conrad Orsel. Yeah. And then you've got Roman Sadovsky, who's the wild card. So, so maybe the goal is to just get that national title or something, which actually I do think could be possible for Stephen. I mean, it could be possible for any of them yeah. there. I don't... Sometimes I wonder if these people love skating. Do their parents love skating? Do they know if they love skating or not, or they don't know what else to do with their lives yet? Are they just used to this grind, and so they don't... For Camden, I feel for Camden when I watch this, because he had his best moment the Olympic season at Worlds. He also skated well in the free skate at Nationals, like the second half of that year. But the first half was a mess. The second half, he came into his own, but it was inherently not strong enough. Yeah. Although he did a good job at Worlds, right? A nice moment. Just, just yeah. missed the medal, moment of his career. And unfortunately, I think sometimes when you have that moment, there's like fake encouragement where like, if someone lies to you and is like, should I keep going? It would be like if Sean Rabbit asked, should I compete again at sectionals? You know, everyone's going to say yes, right? And I, I don't, I think it's so hard for Camden he's at Columbia, he's in college. You're the only really high level skater training at Chelsea Piers, which is hard because you have to motivate yourself every single day and you don't have any of that extra motivation from being in a high level training environment. Right. So it's easy to let yourself slack off a little bit, 5% a day, right? Whether he is or he isn't, I'm just saying it mentally, like, or how much more energy does it take mentally to get to that place right in it's just where chelsea pierce is like not that kind of a rink like colorado where everyone's like throwing quads down right so okay you have that you're traveling and you're almost like chasing what you were at the last worlds unlikely to get to that point again or if you do unlikely to surpass it at this age yeah the spins have not gotten much better I have no idea what's happening in his costume or why it looks uh, like a purple rainbow. I, I don't know. The Frank moment. Remember that she was the one that did like pur purple dolphins and stuff like that on folders. I, and you that's know, at the end of the day, he's consistent. He's one of the top five, six U.S. men. But to get to Worlds, he's hoping for Jason Brown to under rotate his triple axles and two foot them. And maybe Luca not to be ready and for Torgashev and Naumov to be Torgashev and Naumov, but you're hoping for a lot of other people to make mistakes, right? Yeah. And it's just like, there's just no upward potential. Yeah. He's been coached and prepared probably as far as this is going to go. And Gogolev, I know he's had injuries and grown, but he doesn't look like he enjoys performing or the no. musical side of skating. So I don't really know what you're doing in this sport. Ultimately, I just, I'm sorry. Like, I no, don't No, I, don't I agree think... with you. And I thought about a bit of that with Boyang also, although mm -hmm. he does he does seem to enjoy skating more than the, the other two. And I don't understand what potential federation pressure is being put on, which I don't know if that's the case for Stephen and Kemp. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It probably is part of the equation for Boyang Jin. I, mean, I think sometimes skating families and parents are not ready to let go. Mm. Um, I mean, we've seen that in other competitions this weekend. So yeah. seeing skaters skate for other countries and you're like, yeah. I think going off into a sorority would be a great, ch great change, you know, like collegiate skating. Yeah.
Nice clean doubles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now cut to then someone like a Yuma. Fabulous. Is Fabulous. so fantastic. I adored the free skate in particular. If I'm being totally honest, I didn't quite respond the same way as everyone else did to the short program. I don't love the short. I yeah, it was, it was, it reminded me of a program you would give someone like an Ilya or someone, someone who's more um, jump oriented, but you're trying to give them a bit of personality while they do it. And Yuma is so much more than that, that knee bend and his ability to express and glide. I don't know that he needed like a cool gimmick. I thought, I thought the free skate, especially that step sequence was just outrageously wonderful. And this, you know, you ever notice with him that he always starts the season sort of left of center and comes into the conversation? Like, and doesn't seem to mind that. Yeah. Like, like trust himself, it. trust that process. Yeah. And the well, way Alyssa, didn't Alyssa tell us that about Daisuke that he would fall on all of those jumps going in? So he looks like he's coming into his own as a performer with all the work that Caroline is doing and that they still have a lot of work to go, but you can see the improvements being made, especially the end of that free skate was so brilliant, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you could kind of see, and his basic technique on his quads is so nice. And and the knee bend is so satisfying when he lands on that soft knee and you're and just going to- somehow gonna... his quads count more. Yes, yeah. Than other, other people's, you know, not all quads are created equal. And he, when he lands them, there is just something so bam about the landing positions, about the glide. They just matter more to yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. I- inherently think he has so much potential for the end of this season. And it's interesting because there are some people where you wonder if they peaked too early in the season again. Like Adam Siohimfa is, is this as good as it gets this he has season? He set a really high bar. It's going to be hard to see. He's been really good really early, right? This is, I don't know. Because in men's skating, we see more variance throughout the beginning of the season to the end of the season of where is this going? Um, I think Adam did a great job here, obviously, right? Win for him, yeah. I don't know that I would, I actually don't know that I would have put him first in the free. Because? Um... I find his technique overall has that like French sloppiness to it. Okay. I don't find the artistry to be sincere of the Benoit program. And I actually think that some of the improvements that Ilya made, I thought were better. And I could have given Ilya, I think Ilya could have gotten higher GOE on some of his elements. I think apparently Ilya has super long legs. He makes his quads look very easy, but that they don't always have as much air as some of the other jumps. I think he probably needs to add another quad in, right, towards the end of the season figure um, with the quad axle to get those points. And I think he probably will go for it later. But I, I understood the judges who put Ilya first. I think he's made a lot yeah. of improvements. And there were three of them. Three of them had him first. Yeah, and the thing is, like, personally, all the Benoit programs look exactly the same to me. I feel like we've seen it. We've done it. We've seen it in women's, in men's. We saw it in dance. We know what those shapes and pictures look like. I'm not impressed by it anymore. It's weird. It's like, I see people, like, when you see people do these cantilevers, that Trusova did. And Sh like Shoma did it and it looked great. Then Trusova did it and you're like, and then we see it again and again and again. And it just loses its. Yeah. yeah. To me, this Adam program in whatever that print shirt is he's wearing, he skated great. Well, what's it? What is the opening? He has like his mouth open with his tongue out and he's like doing something to his mouth. I wasn't totally understanding that but 
even even and though Benoit you know, getting dressed up in the fancy suit, like he's now some sort of like mafioso type guy. I mean, a villain esque quality to his a real villain esque quality. quality. Yeah. It, it looked like the Slytherin team, really, right? Like at that, it really did. The kissing cry, like when they were when Benoit was hugging them with the tattoos and the bracelet on. After I was like. What a damn tool. But you know what? We were watching it and I thought, okay. I now just... listen, the, this program was a classic Benoit, you know, quintessentially Benoit, this program. However, when you when the when the program you're comparing it against is the Ilya program, which is much improved for Ilya, I don't know. I I, I could have seen it going either way. I, was... I think the succession music for Ilya doesn't build that greatly. And he lost a little bit in performance midway through, but his overall deportment is better. I inherently think he is a better skater than Adam. I do. Um, and I think he's improving more. I don't think it's bad for him to have a little bit of a loss here so that he's even sharper, but I think he did his job over the two competitions he has time to get ready for the final i think it's paced well that he has the competitions out of the way he doesn't have to go to china until the final so and you know if he just hadn't fallen like on a couple of like transitional steps in the short program he would have been a few points higher would have beaten adam overall so i, I mean i think it's also probably an easier pill to swallow when he knows Ilya. i'm talking about basically yeah allowed that to happen with the, with like silly mistakes like that. To me, his short program shows more improvement in his overall deportment and performance in the free skate. And I felt like he got a little uh, maybe distracted in the middle of the program here. It lost its emotional intensity, right? Like it said, like, it felt like at Skate America that he wanted to show his improvement and here he, it lost and it a little bit. The crowd excitement in Texas was for Ilya and the crowd yeah. excitement here was for Adam. And it's funny that he, he puts all of these things working on my skating skills and then he'll show like a quad axle on Instagram because he really has worked on his skating skills and deportment, but doesn't show that. But then that shows that he's a little feisty. And I think that US figure skating should promote him a little bit more. And I think they're so afraid that he's got a personality. And I think that his biggest strength yeah. is that he has a personality. Yeah. That he's going to give you that wild card. He might say that he was robbed here. That would be refreshing and great. And yeah. right now, it seems like the constant narrative is why isn't the quad axle worth more? Like, yes. I, why would I even try it if you're not going to reward me for it? Like, it should be rewarded. Yeah. So, I, I mean, and that seems to be their their focused PR message for the night. How about the Swiss African program? You you skipped over that from Lucas. I sure did, didn't I? Um, I, you know what? That was uncomfortable and I'm so glad we got to watch it. He's dressed like he's going to go um, to to watch jazz with Dr. Huxtable. Like I got a real vibe of like those sweaters <laughs> from like the, uh, okay, the first seasons of the Cosby show. You know, um, I felt like Claire Huxtable and, uh, you know, maybe he was going to go make tomato sauce with them and then go listen to some jazz. Um, it was the program was so uncomfortable in the best way. It was so tacky and so inappropriate. And I really just, you know, there's sometimes that something is so inappropriate that you're like offended. And this, like, I was so amused that like, I was so amused that like some white boy from Switzerland thought that like he could be doing the Lion King in this way. And and I loved that for him. You know, I loved that it was so tone deaf and so. But interestingly enough, also didn't seem so into it. Like, it's one thing if you're like, huh, I wonder if I would have made that musical. You said this is the same choreographer as Luna's 17 Beyonce programs Correct. with the bad edits. Okay. Correct. Yeah. So now we're 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 following a theme. Of... More of the same. Yeah. More of the same. He has what you know, the... which feels imitation Benoit, even though they've been around for longer. You know, but it feels derivative. <laughs> it does. There was much, yeah. I, in the short program, he tried to play it cool. And unfortunately to me- The Lion King wasn't cool with the open vest? It was It was that his cool in the short program looked unenthused. Like I know he was probably going for like casual 
Um, but it just sort of looked a little flippant. It's not, now the music and the concept of that free skate is certainly memorable, but the actual programs themselves, I, he's a skater that I'm like, oh, right, that guy. Um, and his air position confuses me a little bit. It's as if the legs are a little cluttered or something in the air. Um, like a nice enough skater, you know, I don't, I'm not really drawn to it or remember it very much if I'm being honest. He's had some real consistent moments before. So, you know, good for him. You know, and again, we'll see what happens at Europeans this year. You got the French, the Italians, and, but he's been consistently right around there. Yeah. So... Nicola Memola just imploding here. That was unfortunate because he he started well this season, but yikes. So. Uh, in the women's event, I was curious what you thought about Isabeau. It started off so well in the free, regardless of the costume. I thought she was really putting in a great performance. And it looked, I don't know if her hip or her back was bothering her at the end of that program, but the combinations got weird towards the end and then fell on the spin. I, I wondered if she were injured. It didn't look as distracted as I thought, unless she was just, I don't know. I, it was just like a weird thing to me. I'd be curious what really well, happened. Yeah, it, it, so it was that triple Lutz, Euler, triple Saukau, right? And mm -hmm. something, the landing of the Euler even caused alarm. Mm -hmm. And then as she got into the, the triple sow it was like she landed in like a shoot the duck position and could not not find her way out of it and from then on something was a little peculiar it looked very michelle kwan 97 skate canada to me mm -hmm. um and that has been the fear with her and this technique for a long time and uh, listen i've had friends of ours be like you're too tough on her she's what we have and she's winning but i have to say like I don't know, that was unsettling, the end of that program, because she is so brilliant at creating positions. Mark said that the only time she's not in an elegant position is on the takeoff of her Lutz. And I was like, well, he was, was her flip. He was all right. Flip, but yeah, well, just the but Like her windmill illusions, like we we see so many icky, half, half committed illusion positions for a lot of the skaters. Hers are beautiful. Yeah. She does all of these knee slides. The, like the, there's one after the triple flip in the free skate. She's just, it's, it's very cool. There is so much to like there. Um, but yes, this other thing seems to be lurking. I and think, the, I think the costume detracts from what a lovely skater she is. I think that it is. Not a heavy skater or a cluttered skater. No, but the costume is beautiful. hideous. Yeah. It's hideous. Yeah. It's just 18 layers. Even you can see it in the jump positions. It's like, there goes the first layer. Here comes the second layer. And it's all rotating. Oh a basic dress on her would be phenomenal for this. Yeah. Um, no. so. Maybe she needs to visit Carolina with Yuma. They can train together. I don't know. I would love this for them. <laughs> ah. But I thought overall, a good job from her. I'm just worried about what happened at the end the other thing that i was so happy was wakaba here yes she had mistakes in both programs but to me this is a skater she not every position is wonderful with wakaba but i mean her layback is you know a mother could love that but um she loves skating and it comes across and she clearly picks music that she's passionate about even if fix you it's like feels I know, I was like, because again i think of her as like this energetic like big kind of music so the cold play was a confusing choice but but she believes in it and towards the end of it i started to believe in it even though i still wish that she were skating to the lion king um or adele uh but she's skating to this and you know i am um, both programs she makes me a believer by the end of it i don't think that this is her like this is her comeback season. You know, I think next year maybe we'll be in a better choreographic way. What's the basic energy? Like when she started that short program, it was like she was speed skating. And like the way she went into that combo, she was flying at 8 million miles an hour. It was, there was something so inherently exciting that she was excited to be skating. Are you lighting candles so she makes it to Worlds? We've got like six weeks for her to pull this. Uh, I only want her to make it to Worlds if she feels she's ready. Like, would it be easier for her to sort of like, just let this season simmer? 
She's a fighter. She ran a marathon after. No. But when we, so when we really think about it, Japanese women are going to get three spots. Obviously, Kaori is going to take one of them. Who who else is in this mix? Because Your not Mai, Mai, Mai Mihara, of course. Right. There's we a lot. Kimiyoshi, who did a quad toe here. Um, there, there have been a lot of Japanese women doing doing pretty well. I think that getting Wakaba to the Olympics took years off of my life as someone who was manifesting this to happen. And I just, I don't know if I'm ready for it again, Jonathan. You yeah, know, like, I know, I know. Do you remember what it was like watching Johnny Weir, Sasha Cohen, and Michelle Kwan injured the same time? Like, that was a lot of emotional energy. That was a lot of, to get them. It's get draining them. as a fan. Yeah. I don't know if I'm ready for it. I don't know. Like, it's... Oh, oh, we got to do it. She has, she has to make it. We got Marin Honda to nationals. We got it. All right. Skating to the Little Mermaid. Yeah, you go. Okay. But even when she has not been doing a comeback, she has started her season sometimes more clumsy than this. You sending Marin to Worlds? Oh, obviously. I mean, right, obviously. A million years is she going to Worlds, but I would love okay. to. Yes, she should be going to Worlds. Why not? Okay. Why not? That just sent me. Just send her. <laughs> Done. It's dealing up. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, it was it was exciting to see her, and it was exciting to see her excited to be there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Rion Sumiyoshi's quad toe was incredible. The overall posture, basic skating. Junior. It looked juniorish to me. Juniorish, yeah. So, um, what'd you think about Nina, and what'd you think about Kubanova? Well, I mean, I I feel bad saying this, but like she does nothing for me, Nina. And I, I was really trying not to just be negative. She needs like a real choreographer. Like I think we need to, yeah. Yeah, there were no speed out of her jumps. Like she always kind of does those like deceptive hops afterwards. There wasn't really choreography in that free skate, just kind of standing around during big musical moments. Um, and then the music became so big at the end that like she couldn't really support it. I mean, bless her heart. Bless yeah. her heart. Like, and uh, nice for Belgium. Now you got two people in the mix, but huge it, for Belgium. Huge. Yeah, it just it's it just wasn't doing it for me. Yeah, I agree. I, I was impressed that she got the scores she got. Yeah. If I'm being Kubanova, not her best moment. So no, okay, are you ready? This is such like I can't even believe I'm gonna say this. I kind of enjoyed the short. <laughs> defend. Yeah, defend. And you know what? Please make me defend it. So she's in instead of the same like muted grays and pastels, doing like weepy songs and stuff. She comes out in this like fire engine red onesie. And she's doing, they're just, she's like voguing. She's just giving you a bunch of arms. And I have not seen her do this type of program. And at least it gave her sort of a performance energy she often doesn't have. Sometimes when she seems to go out there, like she turns the light off so she can focus. Um, and it sort of forced her to engage a little bit. The combo was good. Everything looked kind of easy. The step sequence, although it only got the level two, was corresponding to the music. I was okay with the short program. I was mm -hmm. like, I will take, I, I will take this. Free skate, not interested, and unfortunately, didn't didn't go her way at all. Um, but I I think if they want to go more the route of the short program in upcoming seasons, that seems to engage her in a different way and make her stand out a little bit more than the other the material does. Okay. All right. I, I was surprised when I even wrote it down. I was like, damning with faint praise. Damning with faint praise. Okay. That's just, we're going to, it's going to leave it there. For a program, I was like, I think I like this. <laughs> yeah. Also, US figure skating. Brady to now withdraws from both Grand Prix. Yeah. They let it be like a tweet from someone, no announcement. Like they disappear right. into the ether. She's a two-time national champion like what goes on where is she is she gonna compete is she injured is she what's happening they've uh, and competed that. so much early on yeah he was doing a lot and From then high and then right to budapest and like all this sort of stuff but no 
statement, no announcement, no anything. I just find it you very- know now everyone's going to sort of start circling with why and what does it mean? Yes. And it's, if you just give a little context and information, you can avoid all of that. No, she hasn't posted anything, which makes me fear it's an injury of some sort that's like recurring, right? Maybe it was too sad, but I don't know. It was just a very strange- Situation. And at this point, then, for for the the Grand Prix that she has withdrawn from, how does yeah. that replacement work? Now the host country gets to decide? Or the ISU or host country, yeah. But they have to pick from the list of people who because are... Because wasn't that the thing when the Japanese pair withdrew from Skate America? Yes. Like, it wasn't just an obvious replacement of some sort. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Okay. But, yeah, I don't know. It, it was... Better to withdraw, honestly. Yes. I, I mean, yeah. we have seen so many skaters just try to force it. And yeah. I just think if you need the time, take the time. Well, especially last year, she competed injured at these events and it seemed rough. So, I mean, she's a fighter. I, I question why why they felt the need to put her out so much so early on and, ba- and like brutally, like back to one in Asia this weekend and then the next weekend in Europe. And I know that they were going for world ranking and all of this sort of try to get the point. Isn't that she's uh, very driven too, right? Like I've always heard about her. I mean, she used to do, people said she used to jump so much on a session, like back in the Chicago days. Like this is a driven skater. I don't know. I mean, who knows? I mean, they could be, you know, you try to get points to get your standing back up so that you can be in the better warm ups, And, you know, and I think that that might be some of it, but who knows if she's healthy enough to do it? Yeah, so yeah. You know, I'm sure she'll be back to nationals if she can be, and yeah. um, she usually does pretty well at nationals. So uh, yeah, but I think that that's an interesting thing. What was your moment of the week? The whole week of uh, I mean, there was something very heartwarming about Adam winning in France, all that sort of stuff. But I think I'm going to go with seeing Wakaba. Okay. Especially in the short program where there was such tremendous enthusiasm and and energy for her to be back. So I, I'm going to make that my moment. I have to say the end of Yuma's program in the free, oh, I had a moment where I just thought a star is back. That's it. That's what it's all about. That moment. And I thought that was the moment of the week for me. So we want to know, what was your moment of the week? We look forward to next week, China, lots happening. Maybe some news about Volieva, who knows? Uh, more about what was going on with the Russians and the Dennis Ten Memorial. The mess continues. So hold it, edge, look sexy, everyone. Bye now. <laughs>